hello youtube so guys um today we'll be doing some um linux privilege escalation and uh, we'll be looking at some cool techniques some of them are legacy pretty much old but some of them we'll see how we can find our way around doing some research as well um, so uh, i've got the linux server i'm just going to connect to the server using ssh uh, then i'm connecting as a normal user account that was created just a better user we we'll see how we can escalate privilege using several techniques. So put in the password, if I remember what it is. Um, I'm not sure I do. <laughs> okay, so I do remember. Great. All right, so if I type in the command ID, we can see the user ID, the group ID. Uh, this user, we can probably maybe try to see if we can read sensitive files just to be sure uh, this user ain't got uh, no privilege access to nine we may be able to read the uh, uh, password just because usually that sets which read for all if i do the ls uh, on um, etc password we will see that that file has got read global so pretty much cool uh we'll be elevating privilege and um, we'll be doing some research as well as we walk along this so the first um, for me the first thing i usually do when i jump on a linux box like this probably initial access is to check low hanging fruit i could just do the sudo tag l maybe see binaries that are allowed to run on the um, root with the no passwords sets so we can actually see no password sets for all these binaries so this user can run these binaries without having to put a password. And um, obviously, this rings a bell. GTFO Bean can do some magic for us. So I think I'll just demo one of them. I'll, I'm going to demonstrate one of them. I see I'll use Nano, more like legacy Nano stuff. So see, I'm going to run Nano, sudo Nano. I don't need a password based on what has been set there. Then uh, if I come in here just to show you, uh, so we can walk along. There is um, a technique here to escalate privilege using sudo. If I know sudo is something working on that, as just like we can see in our case. So we're going to be using this technique. We'll just push the control arrow X, control arrow X, so we can input uh, uh, data here. So I'm going to try and see if uh, maybe that technique will work. I'll copy this, then I'll paste this here see if we can get ourselves a root shell and obviously we did get ourselves a root shell so you see the root uh we can now this doesn't seem like a stable shell but uh i can leave you through what expect the imagination on how to stabilize this either using the python pty or whatever technique you want to work with but just to show you i can cut the content of at c shadow and um sorry cuts um at c shadow and obviously we can see those hashes pretty much we'll find all the hashes then we can copy them and go crack them so i'm going to just exit this and fall back to my normal um minute please sometimes it's highly unstable uh it just messes stuff up okay great so i was able to get out of that <laughs> jail <laughs> no all right so we're back to the normal user shell. So that technique worked pretty much fine. I'm going to try and repeat the same technique on my local box. This is me here. So I'll exit this root shell. If I do ID, we can see, although this user um, is Cybercitrix, uh, basically we'll try and repeat the same technique here just so we can actually show you guys what's wrong. A uh, 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 binary permission can actually do on a Linux server. So I'll do the same thing, sudo nano. Um, we'll see if, in my case, you see, I have to enter the password to be able to do it. So if I cancel this, just to show you, uh, if I do the sudo that L, uh, it's still asking me for password. So this is what it should be in the right sense. This is what it should be, actually. If that user is not in the sudo group, uh, 
what's the point setting certain binaries to run as sudo if you want them to do it there are better ways to do that the unit spam solution actually can help out there so i'm going to cancel this and uh, move on to the next uh, attack vector so i'm going to clear this screen quickly and um, on this server i've got a few binaries that i i have that i'll be using to show stuff so if i see these tools and um, that doesn't mean i cannot move them in i'm going to look cd to linux exploit suggester and i see i'll just run that thing in there uh quickly to grab us multiple attack vector path so we can see some legacy cvs 2010 happening there uh, most of them seem more like around maybe kind of stuff it even gives us the exploits db's uh exploit code we can use a slash plot stack m to pull this down and probably run them in here so that's pretty legacy stuff but for our sake we'll just showcase maybe the dirty cow because i i it's somewhere there i can also use dirty cow to excel a privilege here so i'm going to quickly clear this go back and um go to dirty cow um, I have it compiled already, but if you don't, you can just use the GCC to pretty much compile that thing. So if I run dirty cow, um, it's going to do its thing in the background. And then when that is done, um, we should be able to escalate privilege using that. So while that is running in the background, I'm going to split this vertical and SSH again. Um, user, I'm not sure what the IP address is again. Mm -hmm. 192.168. I'm not sure. Let me verify. IP ADDR. Maybe using mine will help me. No. Grab for 192. So um, 205. I'm not sure exactly what it is, so I guess I'll have to wait for it. But um, the technique I want to show is a technique which maybe we're talking about that why that's dirty cow is doing his thing. It's a technique which will be exploiting uh, maybe a daemon on the server. So I'll use my local box to check mate it just to show you guys stuff. So the daemon which will be exploiting is called the exim. So a little bit of research if you don't know what the exim is. Uh, I've done some research in the background just to show you. Exim actually is a daemon that uh, uh, we find happening around SMTP stuff, the mail relay or mail server stuff. And, but by default, it comes in pretty much every Linux box. So just to show you that if I do the DPKG, maybe tag L, then probably if I can pipe this output over to grep. Let me grep specifically tag I for Exim. Just to show you uh, that it comes in every Linux box. So on my box, you can see I've got the version 4.94. Okay, so but we'll verify what we have on this server here. Uh, but I've done some background verification. It seemed like I went to export DB and I searched for Exim and I found there's some local privilege escalation that affects the specific version that we have here. I think it's 4.7. We're going to verify that this is taking a while it's taking a while i'm just waiting for it to finish so you will see how we can probably take this uh, a particular exim and exploit it if it's version four point according to exploit db we can see 4.91 i have 4.94 that's more like a recent one updated one so I don't have currently there are no vulnerability, no exploit code for my version. But if it's anything around 4.8, 6, 2 upward, down before this, you can find legacy exploit codes here. You can pull them down and compile them and go grab escalate privilege. Dedicar is done. And just like that, see, if I type in ID here, we um although our group ID is still user. But our group, we're in root group, and our user ID is root. So it's similar like our effective user ID will be root in this case. I can cut the content of uh, 
maybe etc shadow this gave us a pretty much stable shell i can see all the um i can see those roots passwords can grab this and go crack some stuff and get a root shell maybe persistence set up something we'll see all this stuff down the line so i'm going to clear this quickly oh sorry i'm just going to exit this it's not set on the terminal okay great i'll clear this so i was going to verify exim on the server so i'm going to quickly copy this and paste this here just to do that quick verification um so we can see that uh, it's got 4.72 so if we fall back here 4.72 also falls within the ones that have got exploits ready if i go next you see that somewhere in the second page here so 4.72 falls within that range as well so which means we'll be exploiting this to elevating our privilege but let's see how that works uh to start with we'll do some extra recon just so we are clear if this is going to work or not so we're going to type x in let's see what it was compiled with that will give us a hint tag v capital v maybe tag a small v a hint what it was compiled with then probably we can use that as a vector to we'll grab i think it was compiled with Perl. i'm just going to check that quickly and my verification turns out to be pretty much good and accurate so we see it's compiled with Perl, and obviously since this was compared with power supports it means we will be taking advantage of that and we'll see how that works so i'm going to clear the screen type a few more commands like maybe just check for a few things uh let me take head for etsy then i'll just exim exim dots com obviously let's do some reading we can see that also happening here so just to verify what i was talking about pretty much you can see that Perl startup too so we had done some quite a number of verification at this point let's see how we can exploit this thing because that's the whole essence so i've got uh, a particular exploit in this box and i think i'll be using that so i'll go back from the recall then uh, i can see exim there i'll see it to exim i'll list the content and that's it over there so i'm just going to run it uh cve and just to show you just like that uh we've got the rochelle id and we see we've got our user id our group still remains as user but we also a group id sorry but we're now in group root group i'm going to quickly exit this and maybe cut the content of that cve just to show and talk about a few stuff understanding what is happening there I may not be able to go into details, but just to look out for, uh, it's pretty much uh, a short, kind of like a bash program happening on there. You can see the asset, then we can see uh, basically taking advantage of the fact that XM was combined with Perl, and we are trying to use that as an advantage to set a few things. But then we spin up that system in bash, then end of line, then we can run that curl to grab ourselves a root shell. And that was pretty much fine. Okay, I'll clear the screen. So we've seen three different techniques to escalating privilege. Uh, there are quite a lot more. Maybe we'll do one that relates to Metasploits. Then I'll stop this video here. There will be a follow-up video or version two of this video. We'll cover more techniques. I don't plan to make this pretty much longer and um, a few minutes just so it's easy to watch and reproduce or replicate so we're going to be doing some meta exploits for our next challenge and what we're doing is we'll look for maybe check a few things on the box and see what we can find maybe do some password mining or maybe try other techniques just to see if that can easily work out for us so i'm going to ip sorry addr here just to verify the IP123. I want to open another shell. The one, two, three. So put that password. Okay. So that's uh MSF console on that box. 
I'll clear this. Um, sudo su. Okay, then we're going to clear this. Sorry, I must have console. That that pretty much fine. Then um, here in this box, we'll just verify a few things. See if there is any if we can connect through FTP. Maybe we've got Metasploit. Oh, that was pretty fast. Than I expected. Than I expect. So in this shell, I'm just going to type FTP. Uh, let me see IP ADDR grep four one nine two. Oh, sorry. Uh, I've split this up. <laughs> okay. IP ADDR grep four one nine two. Oh no. Okay, I just want to verify my IP address. Copy this. So I'm going to try to FTP connect back to my IP. Let's see, paste this in here. Connection refused. Okay, that's fine. So we will see if there are ways we can actually try out something here. I'm going to exit this and clear the screen. So falling back to my Metasploits, just stress my environment a bit. I'll clear the screen. Okay, so I'll execute a few commands. I think it's just best you probably work with me. I'll use the auxiliary auxiliary module, but server, FTP in this case. Okay, great, we'll run that. Then we'll set FTP user. Maybe set the value of the username of that uh, box things. I've got the username. Now you may be wondering what if you don't, or well, there are several ways you can grab the username. I'm not covering that, I'm only covering the privilege escalation aspect of maybe pen testing or retina engagement. Uh, I'm not going to the initial access part of it. I think we've got a couple of videos on YouTube around initial access. You can watch that, maybe learn some little cheats on how to go about that. So we've got this set, then we'll set the password also. FTP password. Okay, the password is... Um, <laughs> don't laugh at my password <laughs> all right great so we'll run this okay the server has started is listening so we'll fly over here then we'll execute certain command ftp let's try to connect back to our ip and see so in this case you can see initially that didn't work right but now we can see that it's working with stage a server here so what we'll do is we'll put in the username user which we had entered initially then we'll put in the password. Then look at that. Login failed, quite all right. Uh, but we're going to try this again. I think I entered an invalid password. I entered an invalid password. I'm going to cancel this. Clear the screen and connect again. User. Okay. Password. Okay, login okay this time around. All right, so we've got ourselves logged into the FTP server. So from this point, we can maybe try a few techniques. I'm going to show you a few things and see. I'll press Ctrl Z. What I'm doing is I'm actually foregrounding it. So if I press FG, you'll see that server is still there listening. Okay, great. So we'll see how we can maybe use a few more tricks to do some stuff here. So in this command prompt that we have here, we just do PS, then we'll pass in a flag, maybe EF. Uh, my just checking, I'm sure I'm typing correctly, type EF, then we'll grab for maybe FCP. So we can see there are two users instance, but the first one here seems like what I'm interested in. So connected to my box on this IP address. So what can we do? We'll note the process ID. So we can see that 7044, we might be using that to do some stuff. So we'll try that little cheat. We'll do the GDB. I hope I typed that correct. Type P, then we'll pass in that process ID, which is 7044. And press and enter. Let's see. So uh, that's still in the background. So which means uh, we have this here 
with the prompt in that prompt we type info then we'll type maybe proc then maybe we'll type mappings and a ppings let's see if that works great um so i will talk about a few more about what i'm actually doing there's just some legacy technique that i've actually used once or twice in the environment just showing you how that can actually help you escalate privilege so we've got this whole stuff but i'm interested here on the heap let me dress this up a bit so it's readable easily readable so what i'm pretty much interested here we can see the start address we can see the end address we can see the size of sets object file then we uh, will look out for maybe specific the heap because that's what i want to collect from here and i'm going to use that so if you look here you can see heap we'll copy the memory address for the heap so i'll trace that pretty much all the way here i think so i'm going to copy this then you'll be asking why do we need to do this so I'm going to quit this with a Q. Um, then right in this prompt, uh, we will see if I can maybe dump memory. So I'll do dump, then I'll pass in memory. Then probably we'll see how that works out, uh, temp. Then I'll pass in the mean. Then I'll pass in that value, the start address. The start address, which we saw, um, give me a minute. I think I copied that start address, paste it there. Then I also copy the end address, which is this. And I'll paste this here. So we've got these two things happening. I'll press an enter and I'll press a P. Do you want to quit anyways? Sorry, I got a bit distraction from my work actually. <laughs> so do you want to quit? We'll try and see if we can just maybe quit this thing then fall back in the command prompt and see what we can do um trying to touch that memory then um let's see mm, let's quit this then we have stopped that server actually so let's see if we can do strings strings on uh temp then maybe mem then maybe we'll grab for Pass. Great. So look at that. What we had done, we had just simply extracted the password <laughs> from um, memory. Now you'll be wondering, oh, come on, but how did that work out? But trust me, uh, as long as the box is running, as long as someone had actually typed that in somewhere or the other, that password is stored in memory. So what we had, this technique simply had just showcased how we can extract password from memory i think you might find it a bit heady but if you follow suit maybe watch once or twice you can try that or replicate that on your own linux server and see if that works out if it works out then obviously there is something that you have to do to fix that uh, um, you can leave me a comment and i'll be glad to guide you on how to do that so i'm going to stop this session here because we basically had extracted password and that would be maybe the admin password and you can use that basically to log in as the admin on this box we can see the credential in clear text basically there's nothing else to be done here so thanks for sticking around i hope you enjoy this then um there are still about 10 different techniques i would love to show maybe other password mining from configuration files or maybe password mining from history file or maybe even some pseudo elevation technique or maybe abusing suite as well some binary reset switch then maybe uh doing some ld preload stuff trust me nfs won't be out of that as well we'll showcase nfs doing some chrome pad stuff maybe do some environment variable stuff as well chrome wildcats then maybe some chrome file on the right uh, then some file permission, cool stuff that you're going to love. So I could go on and on and list. We have still have, a, I think, about 12 different techniques I would love to showcase. Uh, if you follow the series, you're going to have fun. Thanks for your time. And see you when next uh, I've got a video out there for you. Bye. Please do like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs>